Good morning, everybody. It's Ray Gibson, <clears throat> and um, I had one of those nights tonight where I couldn't sleep because I began to connect the dots of um, many, many different things about my story that... They're, they're contained within vlogs on my other channel, but I haven't quite expressed them this way. Um, it's gonna make me feel a little vulnerable. It's gonna make me feel words that I don't, in the English language, I don't even have. I don't even have a word for the way that I'm feeling right now. Um, so let me tell you where this is all coming from. I, without divulging any names, because this is really about me, about the way I grew up, about the mood in the country right now, about being a celebrity, about, <laughs> well, being the offspring of a celebrity who has met many different famous people throughout my childhood, um, and that many of them are still living. Um, most of them are black. Some of them are white celebrities. And I find myself in a very awkward position because I cannot help the people that I have known, that I have met, that I knew when I was a child. Now, and it doesn't help at all that because of centuries of conditioning in this country that especially black celebrities are people that others love to hate. And it almost breaks my heart to say that because um, I was the target of that kind of hatred, that kind of jealousy, that kind of envy from my own people to the point where I totally lost my identity as a black child just to survive the many abuses that I endured, um, not only from black people, but from white people. As most people know, <clears throat> I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. And when I was growing up, there were only two types of races. I even know existed in that city at the time. And that was white or black. And I got it from both ends. When I say I was that a lot of the people who knew me when I was a child and a teenager that they thought I led a blessed life I did lead a blessed life and at the same time I was very lonely and misunderstood 
um, when you're in the public eye, people hate. And especially if you are a black man or a black woman in America, in the United States. I went through things that you, nobody can possibly imagine that I went through as a child in the wrong body, as the wrong gender, as the wrong color. You know, while everybody was looking at all the toys I had, all the places I got to go, all the people I got to meet that I was exposed to. When I was a child, I didn't know all of those people that were around me and my family, my nuclear family. I didn't know they were famous. That was my normal. I was just a kid. And to me, they were just adults. And I had no idea even how famous my own father was until I grew up. But This is a very difficult vlog for me to make right now because I'm feeling a lot of things, you know, based on information that I'm getting. And I talked about a pushback that I completely misunderstood what that pushback really was. It's even bigger than I thought because the people that, and, and I have, Listen, I have for completely forgot that many of the people that I mention in my book are celebrities and they're living and they're people that black people love to hate and white people love to hate just because of white supremacy and privilege and racism and all of the things that have made us as an ethnicity of people in this country, very, very, very traumatized people who are struggling to find ourselves in the face of this going on 24 hours a day somewhere in America. But listen, I cannot help who I knew And in talking briefly for a short period of time with a publisher, he mentioned legality problems or legalities. And at the time he said it, I had no idea what he was talking about. I, I thought it was about my father. And just last night, It dawned on me that it isn't just him. It's everybody that I was exposed to and that in order for me, in order for any publishing company or any literary agent to take a gamble on me, they're gonna also have to deal with who I knew, who I was around people that have been scandalized in this country and black celebrities who haven't. Every single time I read about black celebrities and I see all the hatred 
towards them and and not I, I would say not intentionally but it's just something so deeply deeply embedded in our culture because not many of us make it to that status unless you're in the entertainment industry unless you're in the sports arena you know that's really virtually the only two industries in this nation that we are allowed to thrive my father included And, and every time I see my own people attack black celebrities, I instantly get mixed emotions because I used to be the target of that kind of hatred growing up in a public life. I had people say things to me that were unconscionable things to say just because of my father living in the public eye. See, people don't give a flying fuck how we feel as celebrities or as the children of celebrities. My life was open for all to see. I don't know how I got through all of that without, I don't know how I got through all that to be the man that I am today, except for God. I've always had a group of angels that kept me safe from harm, even though I was in harm's way a lot. I've been in some very, very dangerous situations, especially um, in my teenage years. And my testimony, and I'm not religious, so, but I may use words that are familiar to the religious communities around the world. But my testimony is that I'm alive despite everything that happened because God has always put people in my path to help me out of some very, very, very fucked up, sticky situations. Now, this, is, this all was after my father retired from baseball. But again, before... You know, right now, I believe in the child within. And right now, the little boy in me is getting jerked left, right, up, down, inside, fucking out because of how black celebrities are all that black people who aren't, who will never get to that status have to look up to. Combine that with um, something that a doctor named Dr. DeVry calls post-traumatic post, calls post slave disorder. It isn't about slavery, but it's about the effects that all of that had on us etern internally and that we're still suffering from to this day. I see it clearly. I don't have as much of that going on inside because I come from privilege. But I am no longer privileged. So I'm stuck in this world between my past, my distant past, and then everything that happened after that. And the mere mention of the people that I was exposed to 
is what these publishers may not be willing to risk unless I have a lot of money for some big time attorneys to contact all of these living people that I met at my house and in other places um, from the players of the Cardinals to a whole bunch of other big name black celebrities that at the time I had no freaking clue they were celebrities. So it, it kind of breaks my heart because right now Well, it doesn't break my heart. I am going to find a way, some way, to find someone that believes in me more than they do their fear. Because I said in, a, in a, my last vlog that's on another channel, it may even be on this channel, that as a result of all of this, I'm the one who's taking all the risks. Yes, somebody else is going to have to take some financial risks and legal risks and I need an agent because of the people that I knew that need to reach out to these living celebrities that I knew as a child or I can't put them in my book but they're a major part of my story I can't leave out all of those huge chunks of people I've known and I'm not going to mention who they are because that would be just an alarm for every black person who's got an anti-black agenda going on inside of them and doesn't know it to come after me at a time when I can't handle that. I'm having a hard enough time handling what's going on with this political political climate racially charged white nationalist racist privileged fra fragile climate in America so I'm dealing with that and then on the other hand I'm having to bite my tongue about the mixed feelings I have about some of these celebrities who the majority of black people in this country absolutely can't stand. I don't have a problem with those celebrities because I saw them from another side. I saw them as a child. I saw them as a teenager. So I don't hold all of these negative views of those celebrities that other people do. And heck, you don't even have to have any kind of scandal going on to be um, to be hated on by our people because we're in just such bad, 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 bad shape here. And the powers to be want to make sure we stay that way. Keep each other fighting with each other. And take our eye off of the, where the real problems are in this nation. We are the victims of those problems. Not the direct perpetrators of those problems. Except that through the centuries. We've learned how to take it out on each other. Because we don't know what else to do. Or we're not educated enough about uh, our history. We're not researched enough um, on how to make change through the voting system and through a lot of other systems that many people were not taught how to navigate during school. And the only reason why I knew how to navigate was because of where I was living. While everybody else was on one side of town. I was in all white neighborhood and was learning how to live life through them. So yeah, I've got, I got called coon. I got called an Oreo cookie. I got called all sorts of names just because of where I lived, how I talked, the people that I knew, 
the way that I dressed, the way that I carried myself, the opportunities that I got, the privilege that I had. As though it was something for me to feel guilty about or something for me to be blamed about. As though I had a choice. Now, some could say in some spiritual circles that we do choose. In previous lives, we choose who our parents are, who, who our parents are. But again, you know, that's all theory. I'm glad that I grew up that way and I'm sad that I grew up that way. So to, for anybody out there, any media out there looking at me and thinking I'm an unknown and I'm a nobody, yes I am. Whether I'm a celebrity right now or not, I am. But because I'm black, they can I'm black and I'm not a celebrity. I'm not in the entertainment industry. I'm not in the sports industry. I'm not a talk show, talk show host. I'm not any of those things. I'm a 60 year old trans man that a lot of people are probably looking at and saying, you ain't a man, you a woman. Who just thinks like a man or something like, you know, whatever they think. So I'm caught in more um, between more worlds than anybody could ever imagine. From poverty to riches and in between. I've lived all three of those in my lifetime. I've been homeless. And I've been on top of the world through him and then through myself. I joined the military to get away from the life and the very dark path I was going down. And that military gave me a skill, a very, very lucrative skill. I'm an ex. I'm a retired software consultant. I did all that. Not my father's name, not my father's fame. There's nothing about him that had anything to do with where I, God and me took my life when I was 19 years old. But again, when people look at me they're looking at the whole thing. They don't see the distinctly different lives that I've led. And they're going to be looking at, oh my God, he knew him. He knew her. He knew them. I'm talking about black celebrities. Okay. I also grew up with Warren Buffett's children. One of them was my best friend growing up. Did I have any idea who that was? No. And he wasn't a gazillionaire when I was growing up anyway. I have no connections with any of those people. But I'm going to be connected through my story. And publicists, good publicists, and literary agents are going to see that. Or they already see that. So they're spooked. They think they're spooked. Think about how I feel. And that's just the celebrity part. Then you got the transgender part. Where we are the latest target in America. Around the world. And we've been thrown on we've been thrown under the bus by the LGB. Q plus communities. 
We were there during that fight. I was there. I was in the Bay Area, smack in the middle of that whole fight that was going on for their rights when Stonewall happened in New York. And right now, I'm absolutely furious that the LGB is ignoring the T when we had everything to do with them getting their rights before we knew we were transgender. I was part of that world for over 40 years because I didn't know any different until I knew. Until I saw Chaz Boone on Dancing with the Stars in 2012. That was the very first time in my entire life I even knew transgender people existed. And I was in the middle of a depression, a clinical depression when that was happening. Um, I was living in Texas and um, I started to come to my senses <laughs> in 2012. And it took me another three years of a pretty intense uh, internal struggle battle with that and I had no idea that embracing who I really am was going to lift huge parts of my depression I mean huge but um, I just wanted to get on this makeup vlog that was real that was raw, that was the truth, and somewhat be humble and asking for people's grace, not to judge me because of who I knew. Work it out for me. And there's something else I'm going to do that I'm going to end up doing. Um, but I will talk about that on my other channel. Um, you know, I've never really had to ask for much help in my life. I've had to ask for some, but not much. I did, I did it my way. Crude, rude, fun, a lot of hard work to heal from a lot of things. And I still haven't healed completely, especially with this thing about black celebrities in the news and black celebrities that I've known. So... It's Monday morning, and um, I knew I just had to make this before I couldn't sleep. Maybe I'll be able to get a little peace tonight about all this. Um, I think melanated people, especially in the United States, are some of the bravest strongest people on the planet and at the same time the most damaged and the most hurtful and the most hateful people too because of what we've had to endure inside of systematic oppression all of our lives it don't even matter when because this has been non-stop assault and attack on us since slavery. It has just evolved, but it has not changed. And people are so busy fighting with each other that they're not out there trying to make change. Social media has created another monster that is distracting people from doing the right thing by each other. 
and I'm talking about black people because you know what? This supremacy thing, all that stuff that's happening is not going to stop because we need it to stop or we want it to stop. We have got to learn how to heal inside of it and it starts in our own backyard and with our own people and to stop attacking each other and stop making judgments and stop being just so damn ignorant that we don't stand in prayer. And it's just a distraction because meanwhile, they're ramping up this country. You know what white nationalism really is? It's another word for Nazi. And if you look at this administration that's in office right now, the deck is stacked. Doesn't matter who the heck we impeach. There's some buttheads behind them. A very dangerous man behind him to take over if he's impeached. Cittolini, that is, in this regime. Unlike Jewish people, unlike American Indians, unlike Hispanic people, unlike Asian people in the United States, we have zero legal protections except for the bullshit they put in the Constitution, which didn't start with us being in there at all. Civil Rights Acts and all of that stuff are amendments to the Constitution that they jerk around any way they feel like it to serve their own purpose of staying in power and in control and keeping everybody confused and keeping everybody fighting and distracting everybody while they do their dirty shit of turning this country upside down, inside out, division everywhere. None of this happened by mistake. It's just because of social media, everybody's seeing it. But it's always been there. When I was growing up, there was no social media. And right now, I think it's almost as evil as money. With what I see going on lately. All over the world. With all these monopolies jumping in bed with each other to make things even worse. Milk people of money they don't have. Violate their privacy rights, which I know a lot about in the software business. Anyway, um, I hope everybody understands where I'm coming from. That this wild obsession about black celebrities hurts me, even though I'm not the celebrity, but I grew up being targeted like that. And I'll never forget. So, buddy, have a blessed week and, um, Ray Gibson.